there are a couple of things that I forgot to tell you yesterday that needs to be covered before we go into the two dimensional maps. The first thing is when we were talking about the phenomenon of chaos, we understood that there has to be sensitive dependence on initial condition. And therefore, when we talk about maps, when we talk about the uh, one dimensional maps, then also this phenomenon needs to be understood. And then while trying to understand what happens in the state space, we realized that there has to be a expansion, exp expanding behavior. When talking about the continuous time dynamical systems, we said that suppose you start with a with a collection of initial conditions enclosed in a ball, then we have to observe how the whole ball evolves as the time progresses. And then we concluded that if the ball as a as a whole shrinks, then we do not have we have only a periodic orbit or we have a uh, equilibrium point, fixed stable equilibrium point. But in order to have chaos, in order to have sensitive dependence on initial condition, this must expand, stretch. So, we realize that there has to be stretching and folding, because if it goes on stretching, then it will run to infinity. So, another condition was that it has to be bounded and so there has to be folding. So, stretching and folding that was the mechanism of generation of chaos. But that we understood in the context of differential equations or flows and that we need to understand in the context of the maps also. So, how does the stretching and folding happen in say the logistic map that we need to understand in order to actually comprehend how chaos occurs in such a system. For example, in the logistic map given by x n plus 1 is equal to mu x n <coughs> 1 minus x n. The graph of the map we had drawn it from 0 to 1. Uh, well, the height of the graph would depend on the value of mu, right? And what value of mu? Uh, okay, the the peak position is given by what? Is it it is symmetrical? So, huh? mu by four. You can see that it will be a graph something like this it will be graph something like this and so on and so forth and this peak position is given by uh, so substitute half here what you get as x n plus 1 that is the position so that gives you get get as mu by 4 hmm. so if the range available is 0 to 1 then at what value of mu will the peak reach the value of 1 at 4 hmm. That is why we often in this system take the mu range as 0. Okay. Remember uh, uh, the, the origin of this map, it was invented as a representation of a scaled population of a, of a, of a population, scaled to have the maximum value of 1. So, you, you need to keep mu confined to these values. So, it will be it will be good for us to go vary between 0 to 1 on the x axis as well as 0 to 1 on the y axis, which means that we are having mu is equal to 4. Hmm. So, the graph would be something like this. What I will be talking about that will be applicable to, to uh, other values of uh, mu also for which the behavior is chaotic, but for 4 it is definitely chaotic you can see that here in the uh, computer screen you can see that that the here is a chaotic behavior so we know it is chaotic now the question is how is the stretching and folding happening take a a small amount of uh, some small length along the x n direction and this length maps to where maps to <coughs> this range right so here is the range where you start and in a, here is xn and here is xn plus 1 so in the next iterate it 
expands to this length. So, it stretches right. If you take two very close initial conditions, the distance between them will increase as it goes there. Okay. So, it stretches though you might argue that it does not stretch always because here the slope is less and therefore, if you take uh, uh, a range here it will shrink actually, but it is not difficult to see that overall if you take the distance between 0 to half that maps to the range between 0 to 1. Okay, so, 0 to half has stretched to 0 to 1. So, you have a stretching. Likewise, uh, so, you might say uh, let us let us depict it like this if you have the length 0 to half in the next iterate that stretches to 0 to 1. So, there is stretching. Okay. Now, if you start from the range 0 to 1 next iterate, where will it go? Again notice that 0 to half will stretch to 0 to 1 and half to 1 will, will stretch to again back. Okay. So, what is happening is this one will stretch to right. 0 to, 0 to 1 say 0 will, will map to 0, but half will map to 1 okay. and 1, 1 will map to 0. So, so, effectively what has happened is that this line has stretched and again folded <coughs> right and that is why you have sensitive dependence on initial condition you have this sensitive dependence on initial condition because if you take this process keeps on repeating right zero will map to zero no zero will map to zero because zero is a fixed point zero will always map to zero so this point always maps to the same point all right but the other things go and come back stretch and get folded right now, notice that we had talked about the, the Smell's horseshoe mapping, same thing is happening here. In the next iterate, what will happen? This fellow will again be stressed and folded, so that the whole thing remains between 0 and 1, okay. boundedness as well as sensitive de dependence on initial condition is ensured. Okay. So, that is exactly why you have chaotic orbits in this map that is how the sensitive dependence on initial condition as well as boundedness is created in this one dimensional map. Clear? Yes, 0 is a fixed point because if you draw a 45 degree line it passes to 0. Uh, so, 0 is a fixed point if you start exactly from 0 it will always remain on 0, but if you start from a neighborhood of 0 it will not remain there. Okay. Now, you might be interested in knowing what happens beyond 0 to 1. I mean we have sort of uh, defined things in such a way that things remain bounded to 0 to 1, but at least mathematically there is no reason to think in terms of this only you might extend you might say that okay, let my starting point be say minus 0 0.2 hmm, or say 1.2. That is also possible. Just look at what happens, you try to work out logically yourself. You have the 45 degree line here and you have the graph of the map going like this. Hmm. So, now you are talking about a starting point that is this side. So, we will need to expand the 45 degree line and we will need to expand the, the graph of the map. We will have to extend it. So, we will need to extend it like this. Now, we start from a point that is in the negative side. So, how will it iterate? 
again we will not press the calculator, we will do it graphically. So, we will first go to the graph of the map, we will go to the 45 degree line, we will go to the graph of the map, we will go to the 45 degree line, we'll, so it will go out to infinity. Right. It will go out to infinity. So, any point outside this 0 to 1 range will actually diverge to infinity. Okay. You might ask what happens here? Let us see. If you start from a point that is say outside here, it will map to a point like this. Again, you have to go to the 45 degree line which is and it will go on. Same way it will go out. Right. So, anything outside this range will be divergent really and anything within this range 0 to 1 range will converge. Okay. The other reason is you see we have taken a range of parameter values 0 to 4. What happens if it is beyond 4? What happens if it goes beyond 4 say 4.1, 4 4.2? It is not difficult to see that then the height of the map will be larger than <coughs> 1, right. Here this is your 1, 0 to 1, 0 to 1 and this fellow has gone to a value that is greater than 1. As a result, if you have a chaotic orbit, the chaotic orbit will go on moving and sometime it will come to this range that is above the, the, the 1 value. Suppose it has come somewhere here. Okay. The next iteration, wh wh how, will it, how will it make the further iterates? But for example, suppose it, is, it has come here, it will come there and it will be mapping to somewhere outside. Again, it will go and it will go out, which means that if the parameter value is beyond 4, the orbit cannot be stable, it will go out. The details of this will come to a little later when we understand what this actually means. <coughs> the other thing that you need to know about this, uh, this kind of a structure that you have seen on the computer screen, uh, the period doubling, doubling cascade, we have noticed that there are such periodic windows. That means, a period 3 orbit comes into existence here, a period 5 orbit comes into existence here and so on and so forth. Now, there is a extremely interesting theorem by Sharkovsky, hmm? it is called Sharkovsky theorem, uh, it is SAR. I will write the <coughs> theorem here and then explain what it is. Huh? So, you also keep writing consider a continuous as function f of x. If for some parameter value F has a periodic orbit of prime period m. What is the meaning of the word prime period? For example, if you have found a period 4 orbit, then it is also a fixed point of the period 2 orbit, it is also a period fixed point of the period 1 orbit, but we are not talking about that when you are talking about prime period. Prime period means where this is the largest number uh, in the periodicity. So, period m then period 
yes yes if you get a period three orbit then it, then you can, you might say that it is the orbit uh, orbit that comes back three iterates later so it is it's it's m is three okay that way f also has for the same parameter value a periodic orbit n where n occurs to the right of m in the following order set. Now, this set is important, it follows from number theory. Three to 5 to 7 2 goes to infinity. Now, 2 times 3 to 2 times 5 to 2 times 7 goes to infinity to 2 square times 3 to 2 square times 5 and this one continues. Uh, see what happens, we have it, it is it follows from number theory, we are making ordered sets the numbers. See the first set is 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, so on and so forth, goes up to infinity. Then comes 2 times 3, 2 times 5, 2 times 7 and that also goes to infinity. 3579 let it be let it be because I, I am not talking about the primes and all just just the order set then it you go it goes to 2 square times 3 2 square times 5 and so on and so forth then it goes to 2 cube times 3 and so on and so forth uh, if it goes this way then after some time you will realize that you have covered the whole number set except except the multiples of 2. So, then it continues and you have to say 8, 4, 2, 1. So, this is a whole set that co covers the whole number theory, whole number set, natural numbers. No, it, it, it is actually here, it continues in the right, right hand side. Hmm. So, this continues to this. So, just Consider this number set. It it is arranged in a particular order. First, it goes up as 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and so on and so forth, goes to infinity. Then it goes to 2 times 3, 2 times 5, 2 times 7, and goes to infinity. 4 times 3, 4 times 5 goes to infinity. And at the end of the day, you have left these numbers, the set containing the multiples of 2, and then it goes into the descending order. <coughs> Ultimately, array variant 1. It, it finally arrives at 1, the last number in this ordered set is 1. The last number in this ordered set is 1, the first number in this ordered set is 3. Okay. Now, notice what did this theorem say. The theorem says, now look at the look at the bifurcation diagram, it will be easier to understand here. Say at a particular point here, say, can you see this cursor? If a periodic orbit of order n prime prime order huh, prime period m occurs here then suppose m is somewhere here then all that to the left of it sorry to the right of it will also occur hmm. so let's see 
if you ever find anywhere period 7, then all the orbits to the right of it must also occur there. Okay. So, if you ever find period 5, all the orbits to the right of it must also occur there. You might ask where are they? They are all unstable periodic orbits because as it was going from the from the period 1 to period 2 and so on and so forth, you found that they all became unstable, but they continue to exist. So, all these orbits will be occurring. If you ever find a period 1 orbit, what does it mean? No, nothing is occurring, no other thing is occurring. See that is here that immediately brings to the conclusion that here there is no other periodic orbit in this part. Period 2, yeah, one is also there. Period 2, the, the one fellow is also there, right. Period 1 is also there. Now, go to period 4, 1 and 2 are also there. So, as you go this way, you will find that if you ever find when you ultimately arrive at this period 3 window, hmm, when you ultimately arrive at this period 3 window here, yes, periodic orbits of all periodic series must occur by this theorem. All natural numbers are covered. Then instead of covering everything, then why is it prime period? Then? Why is it word prime period? Because uh, if you are talking about say period 8, then that is also a fixed point of period 4. So, those things need to be eliminated. When I say period 8, I am say period 8 only. Uh, there should not be any, any, uh, yeah, there, there, there should not be any complication as far as the definition is concerned. See, period 1, this point, see, uh, let me draw. What I meant. Yeah. Hmm. This one is also the fixed point of the period 8 behavior. Huh? So, I am not, when I am talking about period 8 behavior, I am not talking about this one, though that is also a fixed point of the period 8 map. Huh? That is the point of the prime uh, uh, period because those, those which, which are also the fixed point of any lower periodicity, they are eliminated. Then only you get the prime number. No, it, 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 it has nothing to do with the prime numbers. Yes. Yes, before that sixteen will be there. Yeah, yeah. That that, that comes from infinity again. Yeah. So that is a descending order. Here also it starts starts from infinity. But in all these intervals, you find things accumulating to infinity. Okay. Huh? So, if you ever find a periodic orbit with period 3, which means that all the periodic series must be there, okay. all the periodic series must be there, but all these periodic series are unstable. So, if you have a period 3 orbit, which means that at the same time for the same parameter value, all the other periodic series are existing and that is why the, the famous theorem by Lee and York, uh, period 3 implies chaos, that can be said to be a corollary of this Tarkovsky theorem, but the historical fact is that York and other people, they discovered it independently without any idea that Tarkovsky actually had this theorem already in place, but Tarkovsky preceded those people. In fact, much of the, the developments in, in fields related to mathematics, you will find happened in the asteroid Soviet Union, while people did not know that these things already have been done. Uh, this is one of the such for one of such theorems, clear. So, if in any system, this means if in any system, if you ever find a period 5 orbit, then except for period 3, all the other orbits must be existing there. If you ever find period 3, all the all number periodicity including period infinity must be existing, means there should be chaotic orbit. Does it, uh, uh, I mean, uh, 
there's no need of windows as a state uh, global phenomena that you couldn't explain back then. Which is the reason that be behind this? Uh, his, his, his question is in this window. Period three window. In the period three window, uh, the chaotic orbit is there. All these periodicities are there, existing. Only thing is that they are all unstable, while the period three orbit has become stable. That's why you see all the initial conditions converging onto the period three orbit. Sir, I was trying to say that uh, even the period three orbit, that was also actually uh, giving rise to chaos, yeah. and that in, in the window. Oh no 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 no. I'll 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 come to that. Yes, if you if you if you uh, expand it. No, I'll, I'll have to draw it afresh. Yes, you're talking about this window. This. Yes, it is related to that. <coughs> it is related to that, but this phenomenon I'll explain a little later. This only tells you that this orbit was actually pre-existing. Hmm? It was actually pre-existing, and it it uh, became a part of the orbit, part of the chaotic orbit at this particular point of value. But this orbit was actually pre-existing. Uh, one clue I can possibly give you. Notice that at this period 3 point at this period 3 point there was a saddle and a node this is the node this is the stable fixed point this is the unstable fixed point saddle and that fellow where it intersects with the chaotic orbit that is exactly where you find this sudden expansion okay we'll uh, work on that line later when we talk in details about this particular phenomenon let us come to what we actually plan to discuss today that is 2D maps. So, we, we ended the last class yesterday with saying that uh, let us consider x n plus 1 is equal to f 1 of x n y n and y n plus 1 is equal to another function. So, that will be 2D map. Likewise, there can be 3D maps, 4D maps, on all possibilities, but let us take the next step to the 2D map. So, you have the x and y now, x and y, and then what is this, this fellow doing, this map doing? You should start from a point which means it has a particular value of x and y x n y n by this it takes a jump to another point. Okay. And if you go on applying this map again and again that means, you from starting from here you get the, the first one apply the same map on this one you get another point apply the same map on this one you get another point and so on and so forth you get a succession of points. In other words you are iterating the map. Hmm. Remember this pronunciation is not iterate, its pronunciation is iterate. Hmm. Many Indians make this mistake of wrongly pronouncing it. So, you are iterating the map like the pronunciation of Linux is Linux not Linux. Hmm. Many people <laughs> make this mistake of pronouncing it wrongly. So, here you are iterating it and as a result you will get a sequence of points. A sequence of points if they converge like so onto a point, then we would say the orbit is stable, right. So, here is x n, x n plus 1, x n plus 2, x n plus 3 and so on and so forth, but ultimately if you observe them to be convergent sequence, then you have a stable behavior. Can you pictureize what, what is happening in the actual continuous time state space in which you have placed a Poincare section and on the Poincare section you are seeing this a sequence of points that is convergent. What is actually happening in the in the 3D continuous time space? You it is actually converging onto a limit cycle starting from a initial condition that is away from the limit cycle. So, if you cut it, it will intersect at points that are progressively closer to the ultimately the, the point at which the limit cycle crosses the uh, point at a plane. So, you are actually 
then by this method you are trying to understand the stability of the limit cycle stability of the limit cycle but you are doing it with a much simpler tool namely a map of this form okay no limit cycle can exist for a three dimensional system uh, okay limit cycle can exist for a 2d system yes but uh, period 2 orbit can exist only for a 3d system yes that's why uh, when we talk of the two dimensional map you might imagine that we are considering a three dimensional continuous time system in which you have placed a poincare plane which is 2d not really meaningless because uh, as he said there can be a limit cycle in 2D <coughs> like this and you can place a Poincare plane in that case it will be a line. Okay. So suppose this is your, con so his question is can you have, uh, is one dimensional map meaningful in the sense of the Poincare section? Yes, it is meaningful in the sense, uh, sense of the following. Supposing there is a 2D space in which you have got a periodic orbit. So, here if you want to place a Poincare section, it will no, no longer be a plane, it will be just a section. And if you start from an initial condition somewhere here, you will see it coming here and then again coming here. So, here you see a sequence of points, ultimately it will converge onto this point right? and that is exactly what we were studying as the map. So, here is the map 1D map, but there is another part of the story. Here if the system is autonomous, then you cannot have a, a periodic orbit of periodicity greater than 1 if it is autonomous system. I explained that earlier. If it is autonomous system, you cannot have, you cannot have an orbit like this in 2D because right. then this would be an intersection point. You cannot have an intersection in an orbit. So, that is what always explained. No, it is this, this argument will work only for autonomous system. For non-autonomous systems where you have got a periodic forcing function, that in that case time becomes a third variable so that you can have this kind of orbits, you can have this type of orbits with 2D, two spatial dimensions and one time time dimension. Okay. Depending on, uh, no, 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 noise input is not considered to be an input because you are ultimately studying the oscillatory behavior. Noise is something spurious that is not predicted. Here we are talking about everything that is modelable. Uh, that can you can write a differential equation for. You cannot write a differential equation for noise. Uh. So here we are in in an oscillator. We are talking about a okay any system. If there is some kind of a periodic input from outside, then it's non autonomous. If it is an oscillator that oscillates by itself without any periodic forcing, then it is an autonomous system. Naturally, it brings you to the conclusion that you cannot have a oscillator without three dimensions. Uh, so, you can still have a peri periodic orbit or a chaotic orbit or everything in 2D if the system is periodically forced, non autonomous. In that case, if you place the Poincare section, it will still be 1D. Huh? So, in that sense, 1D maps are still relevant as a Poincare plane. What? Yes, just if you have LC, then it's not a. It cannot generate an orbit like this. Yeah, it only generates an orbit like this. Yes, yeah, this is an oscillator. You can have this. An LC oscillator cannot have an orbit like this. It will have always an orbit like this. Uh, and it is mathematically showable that you cannot have an oscillation like this. Uh, an oscillation like this. Simply by LC. You cannot have. So, even uh, if there is an intersection like that, mm -hmm. then also 
the time dimension is even existing because there is in if you change the time dimension also there can be no intersection because two times are the same no uh, if you are considering the autonomous system their time is evolving like this right as you are going around the orbit time is going forward but the time dimension is not shown there is it no in that case uh, what will you say as a periodic orbit a periodic orbit means which comes back to the same value of the state after some time that is a periodic orbit now you notice that here if you start from here after this much it has come back to the same state okay and therefore it is in every sense the same point but if there is a periodic forcing say a sinusoidal a sin omega d kind of term then it might come back to the same point but it may be a different phase of the forcing so it will be a different point effectively where were we we are talking about this so you have this sequence of points ultimately converging and like in the in the uh, 2d systems or like in the uh, continuous time systems when we had a equilibrium point how did we study the behavior of that by locally linearizing here also we will locally linearize around this point and try to study this behavior and local linearization again will be done in the same way by taking the jacobian matrix so if you have the f1 and f2 given then your jacobian matrix will be given by Now, what are the possibilities out of this? As we have already seen in case of continuous time system, 2D continuous time systems, this having obtained the Jacobian, this essentially tells that if this is my, this is my fixed point, here I am considering only in the local linear route. So, I am taking a magnifying glass and lo only looking at the close neighborhood of it. And the behavior around it will be given by its eigenvalues. That is what we have concluded. I am not repeating that. We have already concluded by some logical procedure that the behavior around it will be given by the eigenvalues. Here also it is so. And we have also seen what can be the different types of eigenvalues. It can be real, it can be positive, it can be negative, it can be complex. So, these are the possibilities. Fine. So, let us see what happens initially let us see what happens if the eigenvalues are positive real. Mm -hmm. If the eigenvalues are positive and real then there should be identifiable drawable eigenvectors. Okay. You, can, you can draw the eigenvectors imagine that here is a fixed point and here are the two eigenvectors. Now, suppose I start from this point, here is a fixed point and here is my starting initial condition. My question is where will it go? Obviously, if this is the eigenvector, then where will it land next will be given by this vector times the eigenvalue. Okay. So, if the eigenvalue is less than 1, then this distance will be multiplied by a number less than 1. As a result, it will land somewhere closer. So, this will be the map. Okay. Notice one important distinction between what we learnt in the case of the differential equation and what we are learning here. In case of the differential equation, our situation was x dot y dot is equal to this Jacobian matrix times x y. Here our situation is that x n plus 1 y n plus 1 is equal to that Jacobian matrix times x n y n. So, in case of the differential equation this right hand side tells 
the direction of its motion <coughs> and how fast it will move. Okay. And you really have to solve the differential equation in order to see where it goes. But here it directly tells you where it will land next. It directly tells where it will land next. Huh? And that has an important bearing on our conclusions about the, the matrix A and the eigenvalues. For example, as you, as you have seen that if the eigenvalue is less than 1 positive, then it will go like this. Where will the next iterate be? Again, this distance will be multiplied by that same number. So, it will come. It will not move by the same extent. Same length will be multiplied by the same factor. So, it will be closer, but not this distance will not be same. And it is not difficult to see that in progressive iterates, it will progressively converge onto the fixed point. Clear? If the eigenvalue happens to be greater than 1, say along this direc direction, it is greater than 1. So, where will it go next? This number, this, di this uh, uh, distance will be multiplied by a number that is greater than 1. So, it will map like this. And it will never converge onto the fixed point. Do you see that we are now arriving at a condition for stability? System will be stable if the eigenvalues are less than 1, which is a different condition from what we learned for the continu continuous time system. There the condition was that it has to be real part has to be in the negative side, but here the condition is different. Condition for stability is different. Okay? Now, let us understand what will happen if you have negative eigenvalues. Suppose this is the fixed point and these are the two. Suppose you start from here with a, this is a direction eigen direction with a negative eigenvalue. So, this distance will be multiplied by a negative number which means that it will come somewhere here. So, it will flip. No, no, e to the power things come in case of the continuous time systems. Here, see the behavior is like this x n plus 1 is equal to that times the, the, the vector itself, right. Wait, wait, let, let me let me answer, answer the question properly. When you do the, the diagonalization of this, Here there was a dsdt and that led to the e to the power term. Here there is no need. That is why the maps are far simpler than differential equations. Sir, actually, uh, provided matrix in differential equations, we need to get for a 2D system. Yes. But here the 2 by 2 are for a 3D system. Uh, um, once we have got this, go, got the actual functional form or some kind of a representation like this. It is actually greater than 2 by 2. No. Mm -hmm. Its corresponding continuous time representation has to be greater than 2D, all right? Yes. Greater than or equal to 2D because in case of non autonomous system, it will be the same dimension. Uh, but once we have got this one, we will forget about the continuous time system. Only in our understanding, we will relate, but we will not do the mathematics with the continuous time description any further because that is far more complicated. Once we have got this, we have got a far more handleable description. Okay. So, in this case what is happening? It is flipping to the other side if the eigenvalue is a negative. Huh? It is flipping to the other side. Next iterate, it will again flip to this. Next iterate, let me flip to this side, so on and so forth, but ultimately it will converge. But it will convert while flipping between the sides. That is why such a behavior is called a flip behavior. Flip. Okay. Now we are in a position to sort of name equilibria. If a fixed point has, notice that I am using two different words. In continuous time dynamical systems, we were using the word equilibrium point, while in a discrete time dynamical system or a map, we are using the word fixed point. Huh? So, 
these are the nomenclatures though in some books you will find that they are interchangeably being used i don't prefer that uh, in order to distinguish between the two types of systems so we'll talk about fixed points here first question condition the eigen values two eigen both eigen values between 0 and 1 positive and between 0 and 1 then if if you have the fixed point here and if you have the two eigen directions like this then what will be the behavior in this direction it will be in this direction also it will be like this okay okay so the fixed point becomes an attracting fixed point this will be called a regular attractor this will be called a regular attractor now suppose you have taken a situation where you have uh, one eigen value between 0 and the other eigen value between 1 then what will be the behavior you will draw the positions like this and so there will be one direction along which it will be positive another direction so let us say this direction along which it is positive so it will behave, behave like this but along this direction it will be okay so it is a flip direction hmm? it will be called a flip attractor All right. If you have a, a, a situation where and then it will no longer remain an attractor, okay. It will its behavior will become like so. along the direction of lambda 1 there will be another direction lambda 2 along the direction of lambda 1 it will be so on and so forth it will be converging but along the direction lambda 2 eigen direction associated with lambda 2 it will be go out hmm. if you start from an initial condition uh, other than the on the Eigen vectors, what will happen? Say if you start from here, what will its behavior be? As time progresses along this direction, it will shrink, it will come closer to this. Along that direction, it will expand and it will go out. So, you will get a succession point something like this. So, it will go out. Notice that it is coming closer, closer along in the in. in Okay. imagine it like this that it has a component along this eigen direction as well as along this eigen direction the component along this eigen direction component along this eigen direction will <coughs> decrease and component along this eigen direction will increase and so it will it will be 1 2 3 4 5 and so on so it will go out one thing that i find often students take time to to digest is that the movement will not be a continuous movement it will be discrete jumps hmm. the movements will be discrete jumps such a fixed point will be called a regular saddle because it also has the property of a saddle I told you no, the, the saddle has a 
behavior something like this. Uh, so, it is direction in which it is stable is this direction and the direction in which it is unstable is sort of this direction. So, this is also a saddle behavior. We have come across the saddle behavior in continuous time systems, similar behavior here. If you have and lambda 2 less than minus 1, then you will have the fixed point and the eigen directions sorry it is not been very well drawn here. Then uh, suppose this is the lambda 1 direction and this is the lambda 2 direction. What will be the behavior in lambda 1 direction? Same so on and so forth. What will be the behavior in the lambda 2 direction? Flip, but at the same time going out. Huh? So, if you start from a point close it will go like this. The lines that I am drawing are not really lines, I am drawing discrete jumps, but in order to show the discrete jumps I am drawing. Do not imagine that it will actually continuously move this way. It will take discrete jumps along this eigen direction. Hmm. Can you tell me what will the behavior be if the starting point is away from the eigen directions? Say my starting point is somewhere here. All right, it will come closer to so this one. No, there is nothing ellipse here because it discreetly jumps and naturally it cannot go into elliptical path, which is a continuous time idea ported here that will not work. Notice that in the next jump the distance along this will reduce, distance along that will increase, but at this time it has to flip from this side to that. So, the next iteration will be somewhere here, third iteration will be somewhere here, fourth iteration will get there, fifth iteration there. Okay. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 so on and so forth, it will go out. Ultimately, it is coming closer, but it is flipping from one side to the other. Such a fixed point will be called a flip saddle. It is a saddle, of course, but it has a property flipping property from one side to the other, so it will be called a flip saddle. So, where will you find the word flip? Ultimately, it will go out into infinity. But it, while it is flipping from one side to the other, and it will go out along this eigen direction, huh? it will converge progressively along this eigen direction and it will go out along that eigen direction. And since we are considering it to be a linear system, we, we might say that it will go to infinity, but actually, since it is a nonlinear system, it might not go to infinity. We will come to those issues later, but as far as the linear description is concerned. It is, it is convenient for us to understand that it will tend to infinity, but along the, this eigen direction. Okay. Fine. So, we will continue with this in the next class.